Brunswick County is one special place with each community having its own unique character. Today, we are going to explore some fun facts about the coastal towns along the southernmost coast of North Carolina here in Brunswick County, where family tradition takes root and memories are made. So if you're ready, let's go. If we haven't met yet, I'm Sue Singleton with Coldwell Banker Seacoast Advantage here in beautiful southeastern North Carolina. Brunswick County was named after Brunswick Town, which was established in 1726, long before the county was formed out of New Hanover County in 1764. Now, the name Brunswick comes from King George I, who was the King of England in 1726 and whose family originated in Hanover. Now, I have many favorite places in Brunswick County. I love the people. I love the history, the quality of life, the beaches, farm life, and the list could go on and on and on. But today, I want us to explore some fun facts about some of our coastal towns, and we're going to start with Bald Head Island. Now, Baldhead Island is located at the mouth of the Cape Fear River, and it was incorporated in 1985, and it consists of around 14 miles of ocean beaches. You have the Maritime Forest Reserve, plenty of dunes, freshwater, and salt marsh habitats. Now, the infamous pirate known as Blackbeard once hid in the island's woods from authorities around um, sometime in the 1700s. Now, the only way to get to Baldhead Island is by passenger ferry or private boat. It is also home to North Carolina's oldest standing lighthouse called Old Baldy, which was built in 1817, which marks the mouth of the Cape Fear River. Moving on to Bolivia. The town of Bolivia was established in the 1890s and was incorporated in 1911. It is believed that the town of Bolivia was named after the South American country by resident John Peter Cox, who chose the name after seeing bags of fertilizer supplied by the country to this Brunswick County area. And when the town incorporated, it grew to include more stores, a hotel, and other businesses, including a local tobacco market. On July the 19th, 1975, a referendum passed, moving the county seat from Southport to its present location in Bolivia, which is just below the town center. Moving on to Calabash. When Calabash was incorporated in 1973, it was a small fishing village on the banks of the Calabash River. Calabash was named after the gorge that grew in the region, which were used for drinking well water. Just north of the South Carolina state line, Calabash is now home to several well-known seafood restaurants known for serving that Calabash-style seafood. Yum! The history of Calabash can be traced to as early as 1691. The village of Calabash, however, was established in 1883. Now, the comedian and big band leader, Jimmy Durante, always signed off his radio program by saying, good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are. Now, legend has it that he was referring to a cer certain local Calabash restaurant owner. Let's talk Bullen Spring Lakes. Bullen Spring Lakes was named after a bubbly natural spring, and the city was incorporated in 1961. It is one of the state's largest natural preserves. The 275-acre Bowling Spring Lake, called Big Lake, is the city centerpiece. It's the largest of more than 50 natural and man-made lakes in the city. In September 2018, Hurricane Florence hit the city of Bowling Spring Lakes really hard. Roadways crumbled, sinkholes formed, and dams collapsed. Many residents were cut off as roads disappeared and sections of people's backyards were washed away. As a result of the dams being breached, the lakes drained away. All the roads and yards were repaired and, and life much returned and life pretty much returned to normal. People who used to have lakeside homes found that they were overlooking a vast field without any water. 
Now, as funding emerges, the city of Bowling Spring Lakes is optimistic that the dam reconstruction, which was paused or delayed due to the COVID pandemic, will begin in 2023, and the dams will once again fill those empty basins with water. As of the recording of this video, it is reported that dam repairs are slated to begin in 2023 and be completed by 2026. Alrighty, on to Holden Beach. Holden Beach lies between Oak Island and Oceanal Beach. It's incorporated in 1969 and is primarily a residential and vacation community with a small com commercial area. Now, the Holden family developed the island. Now, according to records, Benjamin Holden purchased four mainland tracts from England in 1756 to develop a plantation, including the island. Now, the island, which extended from Lockwood, Lockwood's Folly Inlet to Bacon's Inlet, which is now known as Holden Beach. Now, the island is a sea turtle habitat, and during the hatching season, which runs from May to October, residents can witness hundreds of small sea turtles boil out of the sand and make their way to the ocean. All righty, on to Caswell Beach. Caswell Beach is a small residential community. It's located on the eastern region of Oak Island and shares the island with the larger town of Oak Island. It's named after Fort Caswell, a former military fortress constructed on the eastern tip of Caswell Beach's site in the 1800s that was named after Governor Richard Caswell who was the state's first elected governor. Caswell Beach was incorporated in 1975. The purchase of Fort Caswell by the Baptist State Convention of North Carolina helped Caswell Beach become a summer resort destination. Now, just past the Oak Island Lighthouse, out on the point of the island, lies the historical ruins of Fort Caswell. It was constructed between 1826 and 1838. Fort Caswell played an important part in the Civil War and both World Wars. It was decommissioned in 1946. Today, visitors can wander the grounds of the coastal fortress through ruins of buildings, dungeon-like rooms of the old batteries. They can go over the old gun mounts, trenches, and other properties of maritime days, which are there still to be found. Caswell Beach is also home to the Oak Island Lighthouse, built in 1957, as well as the U.S. Coast Guard Station. Let's talk about Leland. Leland was incorporated in 1989 after an overwhelming vote to avoid annexation by neighboring Belleville. The settlement was named in 1897 after Leland Adams, nephew of Leland's first postmaster, Joseph W. Gay. Now, Gay helped the area get its first post office. Now, adjacent to the Brunswick County River, Leland served as an early transportation center. Rapid growth through annexations and new development over the last few years has led to notable population growth, and it's one of the fastest growing small towns in the area and is the largest town located in Brunswick County. Moving on to Sunset Beach. Now, this southernmost island in Brunswick County was incorporated in 1963. Sunset Beach consists of both a mainland and an island. The town began in 1955, which was a year after Hurricane Hazel devastated much of the surrounding area, but left the island mostly un un unharmed. The town started with 30 residents in 1963. Now, there's a current population of around 4,277 based on the projections of the latest U.S. Census, census estimates in 2021. On to Ocean Isle Beach. In 1953, developer Odell Williamson bought most of the island and essentially developed the modern town of Ocean Isle Beach. In 1959, Ocean Isle was chartered as a town with Williamson becoming its first mayor. 
Now, some of the town's most popular tourist attractions include the Museum of Coastal Carolina and the Ocean Isle Beach Park, which features tennis courts, baseball fields, amphitheaters, and other amenities. Let's move on to Shalot. Now, the town of Shalot was incorporated around March the 6th, 1899. But now records do indicate that settlement of the area may date back to around 1750. Some believe Shalot received its name from a traveler who crossed the river by ferry in 1734 and referred to the river as the Charlotte River. Now, it's believed that over time, the Charlotte River was mispronounced as the Shalot River, resulting in the town name. Now, keep in mind that although Shalot is a small town, it does offer regional shopping featuring big box stores and restaurants such as Starbucks, Bell, Home Depot, Hobby Lobby, um, Lowe's Home Improvement, Office Depot. We have the Walmart, the Marshalls, the Rat Room Shoes. It also has an Ashley Furniture and much, much more. But also keep in mind that you'll find a nice variety of mom and pop restaurants and stores as well. Another favorite community is St. James. Founded in 1999, St. James's name is the short version for St. James Plantation, the residential development from which the town was born. Located just a few miles from Southport, it is primarily a residential town community, which started as a private gated community in 1991 and became a town in 1999. It's designed around the natural beauty of the land. The community offers a multitude of resort-style amenities, including a private beach club, four signature golf clubs, state-of-the-art fitness facilities, and a full-service marina and marketplace. On to one of my favorite places, Oak Island. Now, Oak Island became a town in 1999 after Yopon Beach and Long Beach merged. The town of Oak Island shares the barrier island of Oak Island with Caswell Beach. We mentioned that earlier. The island is south-facing, so that means you can sit along the shoreline and capture a sunrise and a sunset. Now, that's a full day at the beach, right? Variety is the spice of life on Oak Island, and Oak Island offers three forms of it in areas described as the mainland, the wooded area, and the beaches. Our final stop is Southport. In 1792, as requested by Joshua Potts, the state's General Assembly commissioned creating of the town of Smithfield around Fort Johnston. Smithfield grew as a fishing village and military town and became a popular summer resort. In 1808, Smithfield became the county seat of Brunswick County. The town's name was changed to Southport in 1887. A ferry connection between Southport and Fort Fisher began in 1966. The county seat was relocated from Southport to Bolivia in 1978. Now, Southport hosts the annual official North Carolina 4th of July Festival. So as we conclude our visit today with our coastal communities, I want you to keep in mind that whether you're looking to, to upgrade to a home that will better suit your lifestyle or, or looking to purchase your first home or perhaps even sell your property, let's connect so you can stay updated on what's happening along the Carolina coast and in all of southeastern North Carolina. Please feel free to reach out by phone, text, or email. And listen, if you haven't already, I would appreciate you hitting the subscribe button below. Like and share this video and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. And remember, happiness grows here. I'll talk to you next time.